1941, thousands of American airmen came over to East Anglia to help in the war effort. What became known as the Friendly Invasion proved to be a monumental moment in global and local history. The impact on social and cultural life that the Americans brought to Norwich and surrounding areas is a profound one, a deep and poignant experience remembered with fondness by all those who lived through it. I flew B-24 Liberators from Tibetum, was my home base, uh, during 44. I arrived just after D-Day. You had lousy weather. <laughs> it was cold and windy and foggy most of the 44, I think. Uh, but I think the thing that impressed me most about the British was their tenacity and their desire to, uh, to suffer through the war and, and persevere. I had a great deal of admiration for them. They were, everything was rationed and uh, they, they managed in spite of that. On the way to England, I'd uh, met a hospital unit that was stationed down by Winchester. And I used to, I became attracted to one of the nurses, particularly. And I used to spend my three-day passes in Winchester, or just west of it. Um, but at my base, we had terrible food. Our Nissen huts that we lived in, the mattress were uh, three pads of Excelsior and not too comfortable. We never had enough coke to stay warm. And we go to the hospital, I say we because a couple of my crew members also went to the hospital. And they had clean sheets, nice, comfortable beds, very good food. And the nurses used to save their Johnny Red Label until we came down. <laughs> the fields of Norfolk became home to the 8th Air Force. The 2nd and 3rd Division, together with their fighter escorts, occupied no fewer than 17 bases throughout Norfolk. Thousands of young men, many away from home for the first time, had to adjust to a colder and wetter climate. Fish and chips quickly became a favourite meal and pubbing, as it became known, was particularly popular with American airmen when off duty. I got banned for life. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, that's guys. my favourite. Hey. 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 Cheers, guys. Bums up, fellas. Warm as always. Yeah, much better back home. At least it's bare. He's still yeah. getting blotto. <laughs> he ain't biking home tonight. Hey, is your bike still in the shop? Uh, no, I'll still be on my legs till next Tuesday. Oh, speaking of legs, did you see the stems on that dame at the Red Cross? Which dame? The one with the curly hair? I don't know. I wasn't looking at her head. <laughs> uh, she was alright. What's the matter you? You got a girl back home or something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, look at oh, that. God. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Give me that. God. Give Stop me that. It. <laughs> you on the spat? Yeah. Better beat me in a game of darts. Ooh. You're wrong. Dear Ma, I pray all is well back in Memphis. Life here in Norfolk sure is different, and the damn wind just keeps blowing, and the damp just seems to creep into your bones. But I won't grumble. Despite the conditions, the boys sure know how to have a fun time. I'm sure the good local folk of Norwich can hear the music and laughter coming from the pubs for miles. My friend Ricky has got me hooked on the game the Brits like to play in the pubs, and if I was throwing a small sharp dart into the round board on the wall for points. Can be dangerous after a few beers, but I've got a pretty steady hand, and we're yet to have any major incidents. We can remember all the um, the big American trucks driving around, and we used to see our friends and wave to them and see you tonight. Come back, see a film. We got a film on tonight. Come there tonight. 
Yeah, we used to go and see these wonderful films. Yeah. And sitting in there with the, all the Americans, and uh, my brother and I were always hungry during the war, and we used to go down there, he used to give us food. One of the Americans gave me a tin of peaches. I'd never seen peaches before. He said, do you like peaches, son? I said, well, I don't know, I might do. And he gave me a big tin of peaches, and I ate the lot. And I always throwing out gum to every. As the trucks went past, they were always throwing out gum. And they used to give the girls uh, nylon stockings, like. No girls had any nylon stockings, and that was, of oh, course, wonderful to get them. So, how is Frank? He's fine, thank you. Tall and handsome as ever. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, there's a party on the base tonight. You have to come. Frank and I picked up the perfect man for you. Oh, it does sound good, but I cannot dance. I have two left feet. Don't worry about it. Frank says the best thing to do is that Chuck Titty leaves, and as he says, go with the flow. And Glenn Miller's going to be there. Glenn Miller? You'll know him, believe me. Everyone can dance to Glenn Miller. <laughs> oh, look what Frank got me. Are they real? Real nylon. Oversex, overpainting over here. You don't see our men partying every night, do you? Don't be such a prude, Ivy. We've got to have some fun these days. Exactly, and I think it's so beneficial for the children around here. Our little evacuee Charlie hasn't been this happy in months. I think the Americans being over here is brilliant. Here's the point there. Dear Mar, I could hardly believe my luck when I heard Glenn Miller was doing a tour of the 8th Air Force bases. I took Rose to see him in the band before him at the Samson and Hercules. What a treat! It was fantastic to see the dance hall packed out and Rose smile and have so much fun. I'm looking forward to seeing her more often. I brought a bicycle. It's how all the guys are getting around now. She's promised to teach me how to ride in return for teaching her how to dance. I have so much respect for the locals here. Despite their day-to-day -day struggles, the harsh rationing, and loneliness they must feel, they're always friendly, kind, and courteous. Norfolk might be cold, but it's truly a warm-hearted city. My, my school was a little thatched clay lump school. One day, we, they got an invitation um, to the school to go up to a party on the base. And this was in November 1943, when the 4th or 8th had only then arrived. I can remember now the excitement of standing outside our thatch school and these trucks coming down the road, and as they lifted us up over the tailboard to go up to the airfield. I mean, the airfield was still, you know, part of it, still under construction, and um, there was mud everywhere, and so they picked us up and carried us actually into the big Nissan building. And I was on a table with all these Americans, and the men were so kind, and, but um, I couldn't understand why they were putting jam on the meat. And because in those days, um, no one had ever heard of cranberry sauce, and so here they were putting um, jam on the meat, and, uh, and great piles of food which we weren't used to. That was the first time, um, apart from the organ in the church, I'd ever heard live music, and they had just a small um, trio, um, playing uh, with a guitar and a big bass and they, they were playing you know music while we were having our meal and I think I spent more time watching them than I did eating but they they wanted to talk to children they found children interesting and, um, and they treated you entirely different than what we've been used to and um, you know it's, uh, it's, it's made a, a lasting impression the American servicemen, many of who had younger brothers and sisters back home, struck up close friendships with the local children. Christmas parties were held on the base for their entertainment and enjoyment. Oh, so much dancing, it's yeah. great. Hey, Gum hey Bill, you know this kid? Yeah, you're that kid whose mom cut my hair once. How's it going? Good, good. Let's so say you, so you want gum, kid? It's good. Here. Thanks. Are there any planes landing tonight? Yeah, the witchcraft come back about five, I think. Can I come watch? Mm, I don't know. Captain may not like that. The airbase is no place for a kid. Please. Mm, I think we can make an exception for this one, though. So can I come? Yeah. Sure thing, kid. Yeah. Wow. The school I was at, at, uh, at uh, City of Norwich, uh, was the uh, 230 squadron uh, of the ATC and as such we were issued with um, uh, RAF type colour and 
type uh, uniforms. We uh, learned via the grapevine that if you put your ATC uniform on, get chatting to the uh, maintenance staff, they, they, they call the crew chief, the chap in charge, and uh, see if there's any chance of a flight. Uh, the first flight I had was uh, in a B-24 from the 389th Bomb Group at Hethel. And I remember sitting there in a big, big rudder of pedals in, in this, this wheel. And uh, he said, keep the nose on the horizon. So he explained to me what to do. And I knew what, if I put the stick, if I put the control column forward, the nose would go down. If I put it, the nose would come up. But what I hadn't allowed for was the inertia on a very large aeroplane. So to start off with, it, it was a bit of this, with me overcorrecting. He said, gee, you've got to remember this is a big aeroplane, there's a lot of weight there, you don't, you don't need to push it, you know, just, just, just relax. And then I relaxed, so I had about um, probably an hour and uh, thanked him. He uh, in, in insisted that we stand outside the, fr uh, in the front of the aircraft and uh, I, at the time, was very keen. I'd got my um, uh, ATC uh, flight log, which was issued by the, by the ATC. He signed it, I still got that. And uh, so he got the U-bar and he got his name, Lieutenant Maunch. And then there was a, a comments and he'd written very good, <laughs> which I thought was great. Of all the incidents associated with the Americans in Norfolk during the war, few made a deeper impact than seeing aircraft crash land. The causes of the crashes varied. Mechanical problems, fuel shortages and collisions were common. But the majority of aircraft that came down were victims of battle damage. The American contribution was great and so was their sacrifice. No fewer than 6,300 men from the Norfolk-based 2nd Air Division lost their lives in the conflict. Here you go. Do you want to tell me what happened? Enemy flak. I'm a tail gunner. Shrapnel through everywhere. These damn daylight missions are getting tougher. You know it's two thirds of you now. Come on back. This is just a scratch. <laughs> Sorry. You'll be fine. Were there any casualties? I'm not sure what happened. I'm going to discharge you now. You'll find out everything you need to know in debriefing. By the time I got involved with the American Air Force, which was at Horsham St. Faith, just outside Norwich, uh, I would have been 10. And of course, um, myself and my friend as aircraft mad youngsters used to frequent the base every opportunity, weekends and school holidays, to get right in amongst the B-24s and be welcomed by the ground crews and air crews and allowed to clamber through the aircraft was absolute bliss as far as we were concerned. Majority of people in Norwich uh, had American friends. I mean, they invited, we were encouraged to invite American servicemen into our homes and so on. And I can remember, uh, I can remember Christmas 44. We, we, I had a great friend, uh, John Coldwell from Salinas in Kansas. Uh, he was one of the uh, engine mechanics who worked on a Liberator called Old Doc's Yacht. It was the Liberator he did, that did the most missions of all the B-24s at Horsham. And um, Old Doc's Yacht was one of the aircraft I used to clamber around. Well, John was one of the mechanics there and he was courting a, a lady from Sheffield who was a nurse at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital. And she was a friend of my mum and, and mum used to invite them both round when they were off duty. They used to come to ours and sometimes spend a weekend with us. I remember John uh, and Dorothy and I, we used to hire a boat on a Saturday morning and while, while they sat canoodling in the boat, they had me row, row all the way up to Helsen and back. You know, I mean, it's one of my memories. To many local women, the GIs with their well-tailored uniforms, American accents and money seemed like movie stars. The glamour, kindness and excitement they brought Britain and their integration into local life led to many romantic relationships. 
Some relationships ended in tragedy. A large number of British girls moved to America, but the majority ended when the Americans returned home. Dear Rose, it pains me to write you this letter, but having completed my 30th mission, it is time for me to return home and for us to say goodbye. I will never forget walking and talking with you through the beautiful winding roads and arch, or sitting in Garden Park, listening to big band music on the Armed Forces Radio. I'll think of you in the dances at the Samson and Hercules every time I hear the sound of Glenn Miller. I hope I'll leave you with fond memories also. Learning to ride my bicycle, perhaps? Please pass some best wishes to your family. I will never forget their kindness and generosity. And I will never forget you. But after the war was over, all that, that was so quiet, we couldn't sleep. They, all of a sudden, they went. And we all cried. It made a very, very deep impression on me. Memories from that period are very, very stark in my mind. They came at a vital time when we desperately needed help and um, they came over and they, they just made the difference. Obviously if it hadn't been for America coming into the war, the result of the war could have been quite different. All my relationship with English people, children, girls, adults, but always just very grand. And I always held them in the highest regard.